Hello everyone and welcome to another kickabout video and in this one we are doing our usual, our annual team, uh, sorry table I should say, predictions for this coming season. Now, we're a bit late, we've uh, missed a week, mm. <laughs> so we are doing this with a slight bit of bias, uh, bias because we've wasted a week and therefore we've had the first round of Premier League fixtures which means there might be, our predictions maybe would have been swayed a little bit based on what we saw in the first week. Would you say? Or yeah, you just... um, I mean, mine are, there's no, like I said, you know, in, in regards to like the top six and the relegation, nothing's changed for me, to be honest. Okay. And if anything, like you might think that it, it will help us improve where people finish, but it might also completely switch things around. Yeah, because it's game week one. Yeah. Like so much can happen. Well, I mean, you know? United lost their first three games last season. Yep, and exactly. And finished third, so it doesn't necessarily mean anything. Exactly that. So yeah, we'll we'll run through our tables. Of course, I'll have the um, sort of the updated tables appear on the right hand side as we go through. Um, I'll start us off. Okay. We we'll go from top, uh, bottom to top. Yeah. Unsurprisingly, and I'd be very surprised if you don't have a very similar bottom three to me. I'm going for Luton Town mm -hmm. to go down last, and not just go down last, but go down hard. <laughs> I. As much as I don't want them to, because you know I, lo I love seeing new teams in the Premier League. I love seeing these kind of underdog stories, rags to riches type stuff. Um, I just think they're just so ill-equipped. Mm. I think they've 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 risen beyond their means too much, and I think that they are, they are going to have a very long season. Their stadium obviously has come under a lot of kind of criticism slash banter, whatever you want to call mm. it. Um, but they're not a club that can splash cash to try and keep themselves in the league so they are going to have to rely massively on their unique style of play very direct they're going to have to rely on their home form and hope that they can they can uh, work a miracle but I'd be very surprised if they don't go down dare I say it I'll make a little prediction here they could go down in my opinion with one of the lowest points tallies we've seen in the Premier League yeah unless things change drastically um, I've also got Luton bottom uh, I've whether they'd have played already or not, I would have still had them bottom. But yeah. I think that game against Brighton definitely cemented my chance, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Was, especially the defending, it was awful. Um, so, yeah. Okay, uh, 19th. Who uh, long for? I've gone for Sheffield United. Um, not. I'd be honest, I didn't watch a whole lot of their game. Um, but And again, I, I would have had them as 19th, no matter who they'd played and how they'd got on anyway. But I think another one, really, it, it depends if they manage to bring anyone else in. But... I just don't think Sheffield are, are strong enough to stay up. No, uh, yeah, it's, it's worth noting that at time of recording, we've got about two weeks or so, a little bit longer, before the transfer window closes. So teams obviously can make improvements mm. and get some people in. Sheffield United's biggest problem is that they sold their two best players. Yeah. Uh, or certainly their one best player. I don't know how whether Sander Berg was... Um, they sold him to Burnley, which I find interesting. Mm. I don't know whether there was other things going on there. Perhaps he was coming to the end of his contract or yeah. what the reason behind it was. But why would you sell one of your better players to an immediate rival? Mm. Somebody that's going to be competing with you at that end of the table, you would think. Um, but obviously, the is it NDI? N is that how you pronounce his name? NDI. Yeah. Um, that's a huge loss. That is a massive loss to lose him. Just on pretty much on the eve of the season, really. Mm. That was like a week or two between before the uh, first game. Um, so it's going to be very key to see how they replace him. I'm not sure they've got the goals in them to keep them up. Um, so yeah, I've also got them in 19th surprisingly mm -hmm. um, a long season for both them and Luton now this is where it gets interesting because for me we said this on the podcast um, this week if you haven't listened go and give it a listen I do apologise now for the uh, audio issues that we had though um, I think there could be a clump of teams a little bit like last year yeah. where you might find that there's only a, a like, smattering of points separating like six teams yeah um it's the first time I can think really that we've had this sort of breakaway top half and bottom half almost. It's almost like two different leagues yeah. within one. Um, so I think that we're probably going to have the same mixture of teams in and around this. Mm -hmm. But this could really finish any which way. So in 18th place, I've actually gone Wolves. Mm -hmm. Now caveat this, because they did play awfully well against Man United on Monday night. So the, that almost threw me but I had Wolves before the season started and I'm going to stick with them um, I'm not sure Wolves have got the firepower I'm not sure Cunha up front is going to score the goals they need they've just mm. sold Jimenez I know he wasn't a big scorer and hasn't been since his injury 
they're selling all their good players. I mean, they sold Ruben Neves. He was massive for them. They sold Adama Traore. You know, like him or love him, he was a <laughs> he was an enigma to them. He was a creative force. He was an impact sub, whatever you want to call him. He was a good player for them. And as yet, their only uh, signing, if you like, is Kilman to sign a new contract. Mm. And it was literally being reported on by Sky Sports and stuff as a new signing in, in the same vein. So that kind of tells you where they are. They've lost their manager, Lopetegui, who was doing good things there. He was well loved there. So there's a lot of negativity at Wolves. The first performance against United would have done quite a good amount of work to help maybe um, raise the... Uh, the mood if you like at Wolves mm. because I don't think anyone was expecting them to play that well I think for as good as Wolves were United were also dog shit but Wolves did very much play their part so yeah I'm going to stick with Wolves, Wolves in 18th it's a bit of an outsider one I'm not sure too many people are going to have Wolves in 18th but uh, yeah I'm sticking with Wolves in 18th yeah I've got Wolves in 18th as well um, I'd already, I would have already put them there again whether they'd played their game or not um, I did think they were probably the better team against United so you could Swings and roundabouts, really, but um, yeah, I don't know with Wolves. I mean, they might make some good sign. Obviously, that a lot depends on what teams sort of end up doing in the rest of the transfer market. So that obviously has a big impact on um, where teams finish at the end of the season, and even you got the, the uh, January transfer window. So yeah, so yeah, there's, um, a, there's an awful lot to happen. You know, we're, yeah, we're, we're making these predictions based on last season's form, mm -hmm. what they've done in pre-season with their transfers and a smidge of the first game week of the season. Yeah. So, you know, there's an awful lot of uh, of guesswork gone into this and sort of or, or calculated guesses. Um, so, yeah. Right, 17th. Uh, 17th, I've gone for Everton. Okay. I think they're just about going to scrape it yet again. Um, I don't think they're quite crap enough to go down. <laughs> but having seen... I, th I thought this season they might be a lot more defensively solid. Um, obviously with Sean Dyche, but... The fact that they've only signed Ashley Young, and I think they've just brought in um, Harrison from Leeds. Yes, Jack Harrison. Yeah. yeah. Um, but to me, that you know, from a team that just very much just escaped relegation, that just doesn't scream to me like they're going to be doing that much better this season. No, Everton have got some problems financially anyway. Mm. Um, you know, I think they're under the very much under the FFP spotlight, so they are going to have to be a little bit careful with their money anyway. Um, and obviously, after the first game of the season, they lose to Fulham at home. Neil Mopé comes under a load of stick from the fans, mm. uh, which has to be condemned by Everton. So again, not a positive place at the moment. Um, so yeah, I think that's a good pick. I have gone 17th, I've gone Bournemouth. Okay. Um, there's a lot of unknowns around Bournemouth at the moment. Um, I thought Gary O'Neill was incredibly unlucky to lose his mm. role there. And I think you've actually seen in that first game from Wolves, um, you know that he has got something about him to mm. potentially change a team's fortunes um, did it amazingly well last year to keep them up so I, I feel like it was a really harsh call to, to not give him the opportunity to have a full summer bring a few players in and see what he can do they brought in this um, is it Iriola is that how you pronounce his name I, think, I can't remember how you pronounce his name um, obviously they, they, they've brought him in probably with some kind of um, sort of style of football in mind yeah. potentially which is dangerous to do when you're a team that ultimately is fighting down the bottom end of the table. You know, Crystal Palace tried that years ago with Frank De Boer, mm. and it really didn't work very well. No. So it's a dangerous thing to try. I respect them for trying it on one level. My problem with with them is that I haven't seen enough of them in pre-season, uh, sorry, in the transfer window to think that they've signed enough that's going to keep them up. Yeah. Made a couple of signings like Justin Cliver and um, Jefferson Lerma, I think is a good signing. Um, he played really well against West Ham at the weekend. So... I think they will they will stay up just. Um, I think Dominic Solanke is going to be key to them this season to, to score the goals that they need. And um, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But it's it could be another long season for them, but I think they'll be all right just. Yeah. yeah. All right, 16th. I have gone Nottingham Forest. Um, a little bit like Bournemouth. I feel like Nottingham Forest um, haven't done a huge amount in summer from, unless I've missed signings that they've made um, they obviously went mental last season on transfers and just about stayed up so they clearly they made about four seasons worth of transfers <laughs> yeah, they've, um, they've put the brakes on that a little bit they've changed their, their tack a little bit I'm just not sure I think that the, the, the fabled second season syndrome might get them mm. I think that they were they 
sort of put together some good results towards the end of last season. They, they had I I uh, I won ye I won ye whatever his name is ye, yeah. in really good form. He's going to be key to them he again did this score season. Again, didn't he? Yeah, so he's going to be key to them this season. Um, so again, I think they will stay up, but I do think that they're going to have to. Um, you know they're, they're going to have to be more difficult to beat than they were last year. They conceded too many goals last season, especially in the first half of the year. Mm -hmm. um, so I think they will survive, but I think it will be close again. So they, they're my pick for 16th. Mm -hmm. uh, I've gone for Burnley 16th. Okay. Um, yeah, I think maybe the City game has swayed me a little bit on them. I think I probably would have had them a little bit higher up. Um, it's a bit very harsh to drop some down know, based on playing Man City. Of, I know it's City, <laughs> but they just yeah, I, I just thought they were picked apart very easily. Um, but I mean, still, obviously, you know, for for Burnley having just come up, I think 16th would still be a good result. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, survival but is rege relegation yeah. obviously would be a good result for them. So yeah, um, I'm, like you said, I think it's a bit early to judge them off the City game. I'm, I'm intrigued to see what they'll be like against other teams in and around them with likes of Everton and Forest and stuff like that where they are a bit more attacking rather than the Burnley we're used to. It's a shame that um, the Luton game has been postponed. Yeah. Because that would have been an ideal, an ideal opportunity to really analyse both of them actually. Um, but obviously we're going to have to wait and wait for that game because it's been postponed. Mm. Um, Alright, uh, 15th, who are you going for? Uh, Bournemouth. Okay. So yeah, which is kind of what I'm thinking teams are mm. roughly in and around the same position yeah. So. Um, so yeah I mean sort of pretty much what you said I haven't really I didn't watch the West Ham game either so I can't say what, I haven't really seen them under the new manager um, but I think Bournemouth have got a decent enough squad like Solanke has since he's gone to Bournemouth he's sort of turned his own career around uh -huh. he kind of just jumped about and didn't really do anything anywhere um, and I thought he was just going to be another one of these sort of like Championship players, yeah. Um, but he seems to have cemented a place at uh, Bournemouth, and, and they've got a few players in their team. I think that even the likes of um, is it Billing? Yep. Yeah, S Sam know, Billing. Yeah, Sam Billing. Yeah, because I think he was at like Huddersfield at one point. Just little players like that that you sort of think oh, they're fairly average, but at Bournemouth they do tend to stand out. Yeah. Um, they've got a player, an attack, one of their attacking players. I can't remember what his name was from last season. Um, he looked really shy. I'm gonna have to find out who it is. Or is it Watara? Is that how you pronounce his name? Yeah. Dango Watara. Mm -hmm. Didn't play at the weekend for one, one reason or another, but I'm sure he was the player that towards the end of last season looked really good. With the left foot. Yeah. yeah I think that got a left foot player that's um, Yeah, he looked he looked really sharp, and I have to say, I'm, hopefully he was injured. As that's the, you know why he didn't play because he looked really good towards the end of last season. So. an interesting sign. Why is Jack Wilshere still on their list of players? <laughs> didn't he retire like a season and a half ago? Maybe he's an honorary member of the squad <laughs> or something. Um, 15th, I've gone Everton. Um, I think they will be... So this, th there's a caveat to this because I, my thinking here is that with a full season, or a full summer at least, under Sean Dyche, he will turn them into Burnley. You know, they've got a crop of players that are, you know, good... Premier League players, if you like, or average Premier League players, mm -hmm. and he is fabled for getting a tune out of average teams and making them defensively solid and making them difficult to beat. So my theory is is that whilst I think that Everton's biggest problem is going to be scoring goals, uh, which was evident in the first game of the weekend, Calvert-Lewin is obviously incredibly injury-prone, so they cannot rely on him. Neil Mopay has never been a goal scorer, so I have no idea where their goals are coming from, um, unless they bring somebody in between now and the end of the window. Mm. I don't see where their goals are coming from. They can't rely on wingers. They can't rely on Iwobi. They can't rely on um, who's the, the left-footed midfielder they got from Burnley. McNeil? Yes. Um, they can't rely on players like him to score goals. They need a striker who's yeah. going to get them in their position in the league. As If they get a striker that can score between 10 and 15 goals, that'll be enough. Yeah, it's funny because like, Morpay didn't score goals for Brighton, so I don't really know why Everton signed him. It was a weird signing, but... I'm, go I'm putting them 15th because I feel like they will become defensively... Is that Man City mm. equalising? Um, they will become defensively difficult to beat. Yeah. In theory, because that is Sean, the Sean Dyche mould, right? Yeah. He makes them difficult to break down. Um, so I've put them there just because I think they will outlast other teams with a better defensive record and they will pick up points, even draws, mm -hmm. just off that, off that, uh, um, that style. So, yeah, that's my pick for 15th. Um, in 14th... Um, I'm going to go Fulham. Interesting. Um, 
I think Fulham, I don't know what it is. I've just got this feeling that, you know, they did fall off a bit of a wagon towards the end of last season. They came back a little bit when Mitrovic came back into the fold, but they really did fall off. Mitrovic is now looking more likely to go again. They've had another offer in from one of the Saudi Arabian teams, mm -hmm. which is very close to the evaluation that Fulham have put on him. Um, so I think he's going to go. And Raul Jimenez, unless they can find the Raul Jimenez from three or four years mm. ago before his injury, that's not a replacement for Mitrovic. The amount of goals that he scored, the trouble that he caused for defenders, his, his hold-up play, everything about Mitrovic last season, Raul Jimenez is not, mm. um, with respect. So I think that him going is going to have a massive impact on Fulham. I really do. So... I think that they're going to drop off. I think they'll be safe. I think they'll be fine. I think they'll have an okay season, mm -hmm. but I do think they'll be sort of, uh, sort of mid lower table in around there somewhere. So yeah, I've gone for Fulham in fourteenth. Fair enough. Um, I've gone for Forest in fourteenth. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, just fourteenth's a bit. You know, what can you say about it? Really, I think Forest will survive again. Um, I think. They're quite an interesting team to play, actually, uh, to watch. Sorry, uh, I quite enjoyed the United games against them, watching them because Forest aren't really afraid to go out and attack. Yeah, um, I think they've got a decent enough squad to to finish around sort of fifteenth, fourteenth, sixteenth. Yeah, I mean, if they can keep players like um, obviously Awunye, mm -hmm. Brennan Johnson, um, who's the midfielder? They've got that guy from Wolves as well, haven't they? Yeah, that's what I'm talking uh, about. Uh, I can't his damn name is. Where is he? Morgan Gibbs White. Yeah. That's what I was talking about. Um, he was instrumental towards the end of last season. I thought he had a couple of really good games, especially the game against Arsenal. I thought he was absolutely outstanding. Mm -hmm. um, so he is going to be key for them. A couple of injuries could really turn things for them as it would for a lot of teams. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's a fair pick. Uh, who you got in 13th? Uh, I've got West Ham in 13th. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take a safe season in 13th. Um... Yeah, not to like take the piss or anything. It's just, I think, and this is just sort of me judging it on the likes of what you've done in the transfer market so far. Obviously, Paqueta potentially going. Yeah. Um, West Ham don't really look like they've improved that much from last season. Uh, obviously, it's still very early days, but I mean, I like, and again, I didn't really watch the West Ham Bournemouth game, but. It was very typical West Ham. We played quite well, um, very counter-attacking. In fact, the, there was a real microcosm of exactly what Moyes is. Mm. When I looked at the stats when I was at our game at the weekend, Bournemouth had had three, three shots in goal, West Ham had had nine. Possession, 67 to 33 in mm. Bournemouth's favour. Mm. And that was a microcosm of West Ham's strategy, that even against a team like Bournemouth, we still play counter-attacking yeah, football. Ball, yeah. And we still want to sit deep and let them have the ball. So, look, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that we're like, going to be not exciting to watch. But what we have to make sure that if Moyes is going to win over the crowd, that counter-attacking style has to come with a degree of control. Yeah. And we can't just do that every single week and sit behind the ball, especially when we're at home. That's what's going to get him. One thing doing it away from home against better sides is another thing doing it against shit teams and doing it at home. Mm. And that's what could do for him. So, yeah, it's going to be um, an interesting season. That I think there, if we were to do this again at the end of the transfer window, think maybe both of us would be be changing things for West Ham in particular because I think we're going to be quite active yeah. between now and the end of the window especially if we lose Pakatar. Um so yeah and there's so many ifs about it is Moyes going to stay you know does the new manager come in and change things up does anybody else leave does Antonio go you know that's another one that's mm. rumored Aaron Creswell could be on his way as well so mm. there's a lot of there's a lot of talk and a lot of rumors going around West Ham at the moment we need a bit of stability I don't like the fact that we could sell both of our best players in the same window if I were West Ham, I would have a little gentleman's agreement with Pakatar and say, look, we're not going to let you go because we've already let Rice go. Um, we want to build the team around you for this season. He's got a clause in his contract that activates next summer for 85 million. If Man City want you, they can pay that. They can have you next year. Mm. And I think that'd be fine. The only good thing from this is apparently Pakatar has been incredibly professional. He's still training. His attitude is fine. He's prepared to stay for West Ham if it doesn't come to fruition. He's not going to let his head get turned. But understandably... He's going to want to go to Man City mm. if they come calling, which I don't think anybody can really blame him for. Mm. So, yeah, I think that's a that's a fair pick. And to be honest, if we come 13th, hopefully that means we're just not involved in the relegation fight too much. Hopefully we're kind of just keeping our heads above water a little bit. Uh, in 13th for myself, I've gone Burnley. Um, I think they're going to surprise a few people this year. I think that um, Man City first game of the season has 
uh, understandably caused some questions about them. Mm-hmm. Um, but Man City are going to do what they did to Burnley to most teams in the Premier League this year. So I think we, I'm gambling a little bit based on how they played in the Championship last year. I'm gambling on the fact that company seems like he's a good manager and I'm gambling on them sort of carrying on their momentum from last season a bit because they were just brilliant in the championship Mm. last year. So I think that, um, I think they will surprise a few. I think that that sort of, the equivalent new manager bounce, new promotion bounce we'll call it, I think it's going to be stronger for them than it's going to be for the other two teams by a mile. And I think that could carry them to a good spot. I think that as a squad, they're no better than anybody else down there really. But I think that they're just going to have a little bit more positivity about them in the way they play. Mm. Um, I think they could surprise a few people this year. So I'm, I'm tipping them for a decent season. Um, and then we'll obviously have to see how they build from that. Mm-hmm. Um, 12th, I have gone Crystal Palace. Um, hopefully Roy Hodgson doesn't hear me say that because he might come and beat me up. Um, I mean, there's caveats on everything in this because there's still so much going on. There's still so many rumours. Um, they've obviously lost Sahar yeah. uh, this summer, which is a big blow for them. But Elise and Eze being so good last season kind of negates that a little bit because it was always a case of that they had nobody to replace Sahar. Well, now they do. Wow. But <laughs> if Michael Elise goes to yeah. Chelsea along with every other player in the, in the world, that could change because that mm-hmm. leaves Eze on his own. And then Eze literally would become the new Sahar. Mm-hmm. He would be front and centre for that club and he would be carrying that team on his shoulders from a creativity point of view. Yeah. So I worry for, for Crystal Palace if that does happen. If Elise were to go, if we were doing this today and Elise had, had been sold earlier, I'd probably be putting Palace further down. Because yeah. I think he is really important to that team. Um, that being said, Roy Hodgson, you know, he's a wily, wily old fox. He got them playing incredibly well last season. I'd be very, very interested to see whether that style of football that he came in with at the end of last season will carry on into this year. Because yeah. when he came in, it was only for like eight games, whatever it was. So he probably just threw caution to the wind and went, yeah, fuck it, go and have some fun. Let's attack, attack, attack. Is he going to do that now he's got a full season? Mm. When, you know, he's coming in to fix a situation, whereas now he's got to try and create a situation. Yeah. Um, and, and not allow Crystal Palace to be drawn into that relegation fight. So as things stand, with Elise still there, with the start they had, I thought, even though they played Sheffield United, I thought they looked really good going forward. Um, so I could easily put Crystal Palace higher. I could easily see them knocking on the door of the top half of the league. Um, if they carry on playing the way they are. So mm-hmm. I, I think there's some some positive stuff around Palace, but it's going to really depend on if they sell Elise and if they do sell him, who do they replace him with? Yeah, fair enough. I mean, I've also gone Palace in 12th. Um, I think mid-table, you know, Palace aren't they're never really that exciting, but they're never, not usually fighting relegation. They're just one of these teams that just seems to sort of come along for the ride each season. Yeah, I mean, they... they they flirted with it last year when Vieira yeah, was there, when he went on yeah. that, that really bad run of form for a long time. Um, but uh, yeah, they are usually the sort of the mid-table merchants yeah. of the Premier League, aren't they? Yeah. Quite reliable, that you know where they're going to finish. Yeah. Um, where have you gone 11th? Uh, I've come for Fulham in okay. 11th. Um, yeah, I th- I th- it'd be interesting to see what happens with Mitrovic going, because he is a massive part of that team. Um, I don't think Raul Jimenez is going to pull up many trees at Fulham. I mean, you know, who knows? A, a brand new start might be exactly what he needs. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a shame because he was quality, and I think he was in a lot of people's like FPL teams and stuff he before was. he um, had that injury. But it's he, it has massively impacted him uh, since he's had that, which is fair enough. You know, it's a horrific injury. Yeah, he's um, lucky that he's able to play again. Yeah, quite frankly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think Fulham. Uh, I don't think they'll be again. I don't think they'll be fighting. Like obviously they would. They were flirting with Europe last season. I don't think they'll be quite up there. But I don't think they'll be flirting with relegation either. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Um, in eleventh, I've gone for Brentford. Um, this is very much based on the Ivan Tony factor. Um, however, I very nearly got swayed by what I saw at the weekend. Mm. Um, now, I haven't changed my mind because I'm sort of being. Di- I'm. I'm not sure about Spurs either because defensively Spurs were suspect last year, and I think they could still be suspect this year. Mm. So I'm not reading too much into it. One of the goals was a penalty as well, but Brentford did look good going forward, and a, and a lot of the responsibility of Tony is clearly going to rest on Embuemo's shoulders. Yeah, and he did miss one or two very good chances in that game from memory. Um, so I, the reason I put them 11th 
is because I worry about them from a goals point of view. And it'd be very interesting to see how Brentford react if they start losing a few games. Mm. Um, I really think I think Thomas Frank is a, is a fantastic manager, a very versatile man. Um, but I feel like I'm quite unless I've missed it, the fact they haven't brought in a striker to replace Tony is quite interesting to me. Mm. I know Tony's not exactly like he's been sold. He is going to be yeah. back in January, yeah. so they've only got you know four or five months to live with it. But you know by that time. If things go badly, they could be at the wrong end of the table. Yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden you're relying on Tony coming back and hitting the ground running mm -hmm. and, and getting far and then back forward again. So I think, again, I, I think Brentford will be nowhere near relegation, but I don't think they're going to be quite good enough to be knocking on that mm -hmm. sort of conference league door. Right, well, that does us for the bottom half of the table then. Um, we are now going to flip over into a second video, so make sure you check that out when it releases in a day or two's time. Um, for the top half of the table, let us know what you think about the bottom 10. Is there anybody in there that you feel like shouldn't be in there? Um, any criticisms? I know one of which, one criticism will be was because uh, my team's not in that bottom half, <laughs> so I'm sure that's going to cause some stirs. Um, so yeah, let us know in the comments. Like, comment, and sub for more, and we'll see you all in the next one. See you later.